Hello, welcome to Investor of Parts and Drafting. My name is Umo. So, George outfits have been trending for a minute, and a lot of people use it as their traditional wedding attire, while some other people use it for regular ashoebi. So, one of the most common designs that you will see is this corset dress with false um, wrapper. So, now it now appears as like an Igbo blouse with two wrappers. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this sort of style. So this is my client I actually made it for her. She wanted this um, design, but she wanted the wrap to be sort of like flat. She didn't want any bulge at her waist. So this is what it actually looked like. It turned out really nice to think that she's out of the country and she couldn't come for fitting. So this is the review that she sent. She's like exactly what I requested for. God bless the work of your hands. And I absolutely love, love my dress. It fit like a glove. So she absolutely loved it and I'm going to show you the process through which I created this. So bear in mind that this is a snippet from a princess class, trapless garment and a shabby masterclass. So to purchase the full class, please follow the seller link in the description box. So first off, let's do a bit of an analysis of the style. So this is a bustier with invisible boning. It has yoke and um, long sleeves made from skin mesh. Then it has this structured off shoulder straps and then the closure at the back is grommets with rope and then obviously this um four wrapper so i'm going to be showing you the process through which i created this outfit so first off we're going to start by drafting out the basic bodies pattern then i'll proceed to craft out my bustier pattern using princess that from this basic bodice pattern so this is my neckline that i'm trying to draw and i'm just using my french curve to create that neckline and then i'll proceed to this is i'm going to be using this already made bra cups do you understand that so when using this already made bra cups the pattern drafting process is actually different so remember that you're um creating a bustier using um, princess that is essentially about contouring ab around the bust. so that's exactly what i did so i've um, imputed my circumference measurement and then i'm going to go ahead and calculate the waist snatching so first off from your circumference measurements which is the first column divide all of those um, figures by four to arrive at your arc measurement so your arc measurements are your circumference measurements divided by four so the next thing now is the waist snatching obviously there's no waist snatching at the bust so the figure remains 10 and then at the end of bust you subtract 0 0.5 inches from that so that gives us 7.75 inches do you understand so subtract 0 0.5 from both the under bust and the waist for waist snatching whilst the bust and the hip remains exactly the same so now calculate your dart intake by subtracting all of those figures from your bust um arc do you understand so subtracting 7.75 from 10 gives us that 2.25. So that's basically what our dart intake is going to be. So this is my natural waistline. I'm snatching that waistline by going in by one inch. Do you understand? And that also has added to our dart intake. So at the bust span, that that dart that you can see at the bust span area was is a total of I think 1.25 inches. Then plus this one inch for waist snatching that gives us um, 2.25 inches so our dart intake is perfect so i'm just cross checking the measurements which is what you should do so i've gone ahead to cross check the measurements and all of these portions that i'm shading are my darts so now we've gone ahead to impute our side darts don't forget to impute the side darts and then i'm going ahead to draft my back pattern remember that your back pattern should actually be shorter than your front pattern because for most people the shoulder to the natural waist in front is shorter than the length of the shoulder to the natural waist at the back so the essence of that side that, that we put in front is actually to account for that difference do you understand so remember all of those things i went ahead to also snatch the waistline for my back and my pattern is ready I've impu i'm imputing my dart and now my pattern is ready so i'll go ahead and cut this out remember that this um outfit is going to have a yoke so remember not to cut away your the um, upper part of your pattern seeing as that is going to be part of the process so now i'm deducting for my lacing gap because i didn't deduct that from the original formula 
do you understand so i went about i had to crop off about 1.5 inches from that center back for the lacing gap so these are what my this is what my pattern pieces look like and then i'm going to go ahead to cut this out on fabric so this is my my george fabric i have ironed st to it gems and to make it more to make the texture more sturdy and all of that so i'm going ahead to impute all of my allowances and i am proceeding to cut that out including my allowances my side seam allowance is one inch by the way so after cutting always remember to notch your point so notch the boss points notch the under boss and all of that so this is my skirt pattern i'm going ahead to cut out my skirt pattern so first off you're cutting out a full skirt pattern and then that false wrap i'll show you how to go about it remember that your zipper allowance at the back should be two inches if your side seam allowance was one inch do you understand that so this is what my pattern pieces look like i used lycra to actually line this because i always prefer to use lycra to line um my george outfit it just gives me a better and more lush um thing so this is my lycra fabric by the way going ahead to iron estate so i'm ironing estate to only the top part remember that for the skirt part you're not ironing estate to the george fabric you're not ironing estate to the lycra lining either just go ahead and cut it out just as it is so i'll cut this out and then also remember to notch to notch your boss points on the boss as well as your natural waistline on this lycra fabric because when you are stitching it sort of like serves as a guide for you to join um, all of the pieces together so i'm going ahead to cut it with the exact same allowance i'm just pinning it in place so it's much easier for me now remember that our boning is going to be on this lycra fabric that is one of the reasons why i actually ironed estate to it you could have even if i was going to have like an inner strengthening fabric gentlemen even if i was going to sew my lining my boning to an inner strengthening fabric i'll still have had to iron estate to it so it's either way you still have to iron estate so this is me creating my modesty panel by the way gonna have to create that and then i'm proceeding to stitch it there's actually a technique to stitching this i always say that there's actually a technique if you don't stitch it and if your allowances are not equal like the allowances on all of your panels so the allowances on sim sewing allowance on each of the panels should be between three over eight to half an inch so if those allowances are not equal and correct on all of the pieces then you have a problem with fit also if you don't stitch it the right way you would also have a problem with this so this is what it looks like do you understand this is just stay there's no wording or all of that so i'm going ahead to iron my seams open also use your um your what's that ball that i can't remember what that ball is called but ensure that this is what it is so use that to iron the bust area use that to actually mold the bust area very 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 important and then now go ahead to um input um pieces of your estate do you understand iron pieces of your estate to that seam area to just give it a bit of um to mold it properly so these are the tiny pieces so just iron them around that bust area it helps you mold your um bustier you know gives it that really nice shape we're still going to put um the ready-made bra up in this so it will still give it a bit more structure but before then you know mold around your bust so i'm gonna have to join my um pieces this is my front and my back for the bustier area and then i'm going to go ahead and do the same for the lining so we're going to be um sewing the boning to the lining this is what i used i used to um this regaling boning the sewable boning and the non-sewable boning that's what i use so i iron i sewed this onto my lycra fabric so this is me just notching the midpoint so that i can go ahead and draw out all of my boning lines and so that i'll just sew along those lines so the essence of using two those two types of boning is to give you a much much structure you see one of the things that she said about the dress is that her waist was really snatched so to achieve a really snatched waist it's always better to use two or you know use two those two types of um boning just gives it a bit more structure do you understand or a lot more structure so i'm imputing my bra cups this is the way i'm just um, pinning it in place and i'm going to go ahead and check the fit of that before stitching it in place i've gone ahead to um stitch that in place and this is what it looks like on my body she's much bigger than me but 
you should be able to use your body to test the fit and then you know still have a really good results do you understand especially if um you guys you and the client is sort of like of similar sizes so i'm going ahead to finish this up i'm using my lining to turn my fashion fabric so remember to sew the boning at that center back area very very important because you sort of like need it to reinforce the grommets that you're going to fix it's called grommet or eyelets whichever one so i'm gonna have to turn this and i'm gonna have to iron this and see how nice and clean it looks so this is the center back i'm just going ahead to now use basting stitches to hold my stitches in place i just it's always this using basting stitches to sort of like keep your seams in place is just really important because it gives you sort of like that a much cleaner finishing you know and all of that so this is just basting stitches i wish i actually used a different thread to do the basting stitches but i used white thread because if i used a different thread then you'd have been able to see it more clearly but this is what's just stitch all the way around just to keep your seams in place iron it with um, steam iron you know so that everything is just crisp and neat so after doing this this is my boning i've gone ahead to sew the boning at that center back if you look at it very well you notice that it's a lot more reinforced like can you see there's a bit more structure at that center back so i'm going ahead now to sew up my skirt i'm going ahead to sew the front and the back together that is for the fashion fabric and then now we're going ahead to create that um false wrap thingy so now remember that to create that false wrap thingy first off the the fabric you use should be way longer than your the length of your the skirt part of your dress because remember it's going to have folds in front it should be longer in length it should be longer in width so this is the width you can see that mine is longer and then in length also it is actually longer remember that i said my client didn't want hers to be bulky at the waist so that determined the length that i used and then go ahead and hem the top part and then in fixing it see notice that there's about half an inch um gap between the top between your the main skirt and this wrap thing that you're fixing so ensure that you fix it in that way then go ahead and you can either put this on a dress form and drape or you can actually just pull gathers at that top and then in, tuck it into the seam do you understand that's in between the seam of the front and the back at that side do you understand and then for the other side you can go ahead and um, use like a stitch to hold that in place you can eventually use cut out from the judge to cover the stitch so this is what it's actually can you see the difference can you see the difference so it should it would actually be shorter i think this is about maybe 10 to 12 inches depending on what you want but this is what the front looks like so on this side on this other side that is not stitched into the seam you would have to use a stitch to hold that hold the um, drapes in place do you understand and then you can just cut cover that with um, cut out from the fabric so you can see how much longer mine is she didn't want her so full so that really determined what i did compared to what some other people would have wanted so this is what it is this is my um, bustier finished and then i'm going to go ahead and attach the skirt part to this um bustier so this is my skirt part i've gone ahead to um hem the top use the lining to turn the fashion fabric at the waist area do you understand so i'm just going to go ahead and now attach this to the bustier so i've gone ahead to um attach this and i'm going to be showing you what that actually looks like so in attaching it ensure that at the side seam it matches do you understand both top and bottom match at the side seam. so i've gone ahead to attach this and i'm going ahead to now fix my zip so to fix my zip now I folded it into two and i'm going to divide my circumference measurements by two in order to fix that zip do you understand that always bear in mind that your zip should end at about two inches below your hip line so that the length of that zip is not too long so this is me um, marking where my zip would sit so you can see i folded it into two so from the center front of both the of the skirt part i'm measuring what i should actually have and then i'm going to go ahead and fix that zip so i mark i'm mark i'm marking my waist measurement i'm going to go ahead and also mark the 
hip line measurement and then i'll go ahead and fix the zip and show you what that looks like so this is what it looked like after i had fixed the zip go ahead and finish up the um top that's um top part where the zip stared from and then sew up your bottom area also notice that i fixed the modesty panel you can see that i fixed the modesty panel and i'm going to go ahead and fix the grommets along that point that i sewed the bone into for reinforcement so this is what the front looks like honestly this video does not even do justice and the pictures that she sent doesn't even do justice because she didn't send professional pictures so anyways let me show you how i created this um, structured off shoulder strap so first off we used the same george fabric for this and i went ahead to pleat my fabric so i've ironed can you see that i've ironed pleats in place jensen is not lined i've not ironed the end state too. this is just pleats on the plain fabric jensen so this is the length and then this is the um breadth of the fabric that i used and i just ironed pleats randomly in place but ensure that all of the pleats are equal so the size of the pleats must be equal so i did that for both sleeves and then i'm not going to go ahead as it is already pleated i'm going to iron st to the wrong side of this um fabric that i've pleated so as you're ironing st you're not ironing st to the full fabric you're ironing you're using the st to hold the pleats in place so can you see that my fabric is still pleated and i've ironed st to it. so i'm just trimming out the um excess and the raw edges and ensuring that the sizes of the um, thingy that i iron for both sleeves are exactly the same so this is what it essentially looks like and then i'm going to go ahead and cut lining for this also i'm going to be using boning this is sewable boning to reinforce to add some form of reinforcement to this sleeve seeing as this structured sleeve so i'm going to sew take my sewable boning and sew it to the top can you see the top as well as the bottom just so that i can hold use it to um, give it structure so i'll do that and you can see what it looks like after you've sewn um bone into it can you see you can see that it's a lot more structured and then it's not flat you know it gives it that um structured but bouncy effect so that's why i used this to a bone so this is what it looks like this picture still doesn't do justice but this is what it looks like you can actually see the place so now let's go ahead and fix the yoke and the long sleeve so this is the yoke remember that we drafted this um yoke with the bustier pattern so i'm just placing this on my fabric and then i've cut that out and then this is what it looks like i've gone ahead to also join this to the bustier in front and then i'm going to go ahead and also join it at the back so after joining it in front just cross check i put this on my this is my body form it's not even a dress form so just the body form so i put it on my body form to cross check the measurements and ensure that the bust point is still sitting at the right spot and then also at the back ensure that the yoke sits at um, equal points do you understand like everything must just be balanced and then go ahead and also still trim out your arm side if you need to trim that out so just ensure that use you cannot you still have to eyeball it also to ensure that it's sitting properly and everything is just well um, aligned so this is what it looks like after i had fixed the yoke and now i'm going ahead to just um try to drape on my mannequin this is just a regular mannequin and this is what the drapes look like so i'm just trying to hold the drapes in place and then i'm going to go ahead and stitch that so you're not stitching that to the other side of the um skirt part do you understand you're stitching it on its own and then now you're going to impute um hook and um stuff there like a hook and aisle or something or that skirt's hook impute it on one side of the wrap and then at that back side of the skirt part so that when she wears it she can now hook it in place do you understand that so it's not actually sewn so this is what um the back should look like and this is this is the sort of like the final result which she actually loved so i've come to the end of this tutorial thanks for watching if you're not subscribed at this point please endeavor to subscribe and if you found this helpful please give this video a like